Jimmy Thang from Maximum PC here at GDC 2015. I'm here at Epic's booth speaking with uh, General Manager Ray. And Ray, uh, you guys have announced a whole bunch of things at the show. Uh, you know, uh, the biggest news being that the Unreal Engine is going to be uh, free moving forward. Um, can you talk about uh, that model? Yeah, so uh, yeah, as of this Monday, we've actually made the engine free for any developer. Um, you, know, you can go to unrealengine.com and download it right away. Uh, it is 5% uh, uh, after $3,000 in revenue every quarter, uh, which really speaks to our Model 1 is at its core, we succeed when developers succeed, right? Um, and now we're right there along with you. So they, so um, it's kind of interesting, you, you mentioned that you have like a $3,000 buffer in case in which it doesn't take off, that you, you don't penalize, I guess you don't charge, take well, off. Yeah, I think these days there's, there's a wide diversity of uh, developers in the type of projects we're going for. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's uh, just, you know, no, no friction for people to get started, to pick up the tools and, you know, start actually building whatever their idea may be. Uh, one of the demos that you guys are showing off is this uh, demo in the background right here with the kite. Yeah. Um, and is this is this done in, in real time or what's yeah. what's using the in-game engine? Or? Yeah, yeah, so uh, we actually, this represents two efforts we had. Um, you know, we've been listening to developers on um, some features they'd like to see in the engine and Large Worlds was a big part of that, you know, there's a lot of fascination of open environments and sandbox style games. Um, and so we put a lot of effort on the, the core tech to make sure things like streaming, um, you see like foliage and uh, procedural content placement tools. Um, like I said, 100 square miles for this environment, you can actually fly around. Uh, we also had an effort around photo modeling and really showcasing what's possible with physically based rendering. Right? Um, photo modeling is a technique where you actually capture real world assets, um, digitize those, you know, get the geometry materials and then we're able to render them. And, and get close to photo real quality. Um, with this particular, we actually started with Scotland as the uh, you know the actual uh, geometry uh, terrain uh, height map, sorry. Um, and we were trying to do some photo capture, photo modeling capture in Scotland, but uh, clouds in the winter are not great, so we ended up doing the other part in New Zealand. So it's sort of a mishmash. Um, I can actually pick it up and fly around as well. We've got little drone controls you can see. No, I, I actually uh, tried it downstairs earlier, and uh, I gotta say the graphics are, are phenomenal. Yeah. You know, they, it, it seems like it, it, it looks it looks so good that it seems like you're gonna need like a really beastly rig to take full advantage of that. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So um, we've actually you know made sure we don't want to build tech that isn't usable by developers everywhere, right? Um, so a big part of this, like this running right now is on NVIDIA's new uh, hardware, but most of the development actually was on like 980s and even some 770 class uh, uh, GPUs. Um, and we make sure that there's a, a scalability built into all of it, right? So, um, you know, there's still some possibility you build your content once and then the largest number of people are able to experience that, you know, despite or whatever their hardware may be. Um, yeah, the other factors on this too is, uh, you know, this is entirely real-time lighting too, you know, so I can actually do full time of day um, and uh, yeah, all kinds of features go into that. And the great thing too is all this work is available to developers today. So you go download Unreal Engine 4, you can use the same technology that we are showing off here. Uh, one thing that I'm starting to see is that um, I think for a long time, uh, you know, at Maximum PC, we cover PC hardware and, and our readers want to see game developers take advantage of the awesome rigs that they have. And for a long time, I think that the consoles were kind of like weighing them down, so to speak. But it seems like, you know, you guys and, and Crytek and, you know, Valve announced their, their, you know, their new engine. And it seems like we're moving towards this uh, transition of like, yeah, it's going to work for a bunch of systems that are out there now, but we're also going to try to make the engine future-proof as well. Yeah, um, so from the very beginning with UA4, uh, we, we knew we want a scalable architecture. And in some respects, maybe this is the last engine we have to write. Um, and we can just adapt to the new technology and as the hardware increases. Um, and especially, you know, this year, all about GDC and probably for a few years to come, right? Um, and the extra performance requirements, you know, you're no longer just rendering a single scene. You're now doing it uh, stereo, so you got to render it twice, and you got to do it at least 90 hertz to avoid any uh, uh, nausea and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like I said, back the, the core of every feature that we build, we make sure that it's not just for the high end. Um, you know, we want to be inspired by what's next and what's around the corner, but we also want to make sure that that's accessible and usable today. Uh, speaking of, of which, you know, I just you know, had a chance to try out your, your new VR demo. Um, for those that aren't at the show, it involved uh, essentially being transported to the world of The Hobbit. 
and uh, you know you were surrounded by a, a mountain of gold, yeah. and then uh, Smog the uh, the dragon comes out and he walks around you, and then eventually he like you know burns you, and then the demo ends. Yeah. Uh, the demo was was you know obviously it's visually gorgeous. Um, I got a great sense of presence. Yeah. Uh, obviously Unreal is pushing. Uh, VR really heavily. Yeah. Uh, in, in your opinion, in your company's opinion, is, is VR here to stay, or yeah. is it, or is it, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I feel fairly confident in saying that uh, VR is, is one of the, the next big platforms for, for the industry, and and in many industries, right? You know, with like you said, the, the Smog demo it was a collaboration with uh, Weta Digital, um, you know, and they're like a, honestly a legendary you know VFX company um, that are masters of, of film. Um, so it's been really fascinating to, to have the opportunity to work with them and understand like their technology and their pipeline and to see what it takes, you know, sometimes they can take up to like 10 hours for a single shot and how do we translate, you know, use that same data of Smog, the realistic dragon, and bring him into real-time VR experience. It's been, it's been quite a challenge. Um, and it, it's interesting, I think we're still early days as, as creators, you know, you see a lot of people taking kind of existing game experiences and translating those to VR, and some of them out of the box are just immediately cooler because of the immersive qualities. Um, but I think we're quickly discovering like VR, and especially with input now, you know, a lot of newcomers to that. Um, there are new tools, new techniques that are allow us to create new experiences that that may not just be games or may not just be films, right? Maybe there's a, a whole new uh, media ahead of us. Right? And, okay, and uh, I mean. Considering the fact that you guys are investing so heavily into, into VR, um, is is developing the experience for a traditional game a lot different than it is for like rendering a scene for VR, like the scaling and, and some of the tricks, the visual tricks that you have to do? Uh, so it's kind of the answer is both, right? In a lot of respects, you know, building a game for a single screen um, can be almost identical, especially from a workflow point of view. Um, as building a VR experience, but also as a developer on VR, you'll quickly find there's some some very obvious don'ts, right? Um, if you have people in a, a situation where they feel like they're they're physically present as a first-person experience, the last thing you want to do is, is move the camera because that'll immediately trigger some some unpleasant biological uh, you know reactions to it. Um, but the flip side, you know, we really focus on where possible with with the tools and the editor of making sure that. Um, we can maintain that cast iteration loop, which is so critical to the, the creative process when it comes to games or, or interactive uh, storytelling. Uh, you know, at uh, GDC this year, there's a lot of you know VR headsets out there. Yeah. Um, you know, are you are you guys working with with all the major players out there? Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, yeah, UE4 supports uh, you know the new Steam VR hardware. Um, of course, we've supported Oculus for quite some time. Have you had a chance to to check that out? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I, I think it's, it's quite fascinating, some of the new ideas they've brought to the table. Yeah, I've had a chance to uh, try that out myself. I found their uh, control solution to be really awesome. Yeah. Um, do you think that's like the ideal control setup for the time being? Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to getting uh, more developer kits so we can experiment more and more and see. Um, yeah, it seems like they're definitely on the right track with it. Okay, and is it, is it kind of, um, I think, you know, when we reported that uh, we really liked uh, Valve's solution, a lot of our readers are wondering, is this uh, gonna be like a, a battle between VHS and then, you know, Betamax and things <laughs> like that? Like, how, how do you, as like a third party, you know, game developer or, you know, engine maker, uh, feel about like, you know, is this getting too crowded now or is that a good thing or oh, I can think both survive, like, you know? Yeah, I, I think there's plenty of, plenty of evidence for the ages that competition is always healthy, right? Um, and in, in this case, you know, game developers generally are going to be the beneficiary of, of this, and, and same gamers as well, right? Um, I think uh, maybe it's too early to tell if like their model is the the ultimate model that becomes a sort of de facto standard. Um, but I'm really grateful that they're they're helping to push us forward, right? We're going we're going to get there eventually. Cool. All right. Thank you for your time.